The drone has already changed the calculus of conflict. In recent years, loitering munitions and small unmanned aerial systems have altered the battlefield from massed formations and linear fronts to a dispersed, networked environment where inexpensive platforms can inflict disproportionate damage on ports, power infrastructure, and lines of communication. Northern Europe has responded not with a single weapon system, but with a layered approach that treats counter-drone capability as an ecosystem to build, sustain, and normalize across military and civilian agencies. Detection is the indispensable first layer. Traditional radar retains value, but modern threats demand sensor fusion. X and S-band radars integrated with passive radio frequency detectors, electro-optical infrared cameras, and acoustic arrays. Fusion reduces false positives and provides the fidelity needed for timely decision-making. For the Nordics, investing in a distributed detection network covering literals, urban approaches, and critical infrastructure reduces the time between first contact and an effective response and makes cascading failures less likely. Classification and attribution follow detection. Machine learning classifiers and automated threat libraries help distinguish hobbyist quadcopters from guided loitering munitions or reconnaissance systems. This is not merely a technical detail, it shapes legal and political options. A misclassification can force a commander into an unnecessary kinetic response with diplomatic consequences. In congested airspace like the Baltic, where civilian traffic, fishing vessels and military flights coexist, high confidence attribution buys time and legitimacy for proportionate responses. Disruption is the attractive middle ground. Electronic warfare, RF jamming, GPS spoofing and cyber interdiction can neutralize many unmanned aerial systems without destroying them. These non-kinetic options minimize collateral damage and reduce escalation risk, which is politically valuable in the densely interconnected states of Northern Europe. Yet disruption has limits. Jamming can affect civilian navigation and communications. Spectrum management is complex and domestic legal regimes impose constraints on how widely and when such measures can be employed. Policymakers therefore balance the operational benefits of EW with regulatory safeguards and contingency planning. Kinetic defeat remains essential for high value or persistent threats. The Nordic states have favored a calibrated mix, medium caliber guns equipped with programmable ammunition, short range interceptors and interceptor drones. The 35 mm ahead round has become a prominent example because it creates a cloud of sub-projectiles optimized to destroy small UAV airframes at relatively low cost per engagement. Interceptor missiles protect against higher altitude or faster threats, while autonomous interceptor drones provide a modular, reusable option for contested littoral environments. The procurement decisions reflect a pragmatic calculus of cost per effect and the likely target set in a Baltic contingency. Integration binds the layers into an effective defense. A gun, an EW truck, and a coastal radar are useful in isolation. Their real value emerges when command and control orchestrates them with timelines measured in seconds rather than hours. Interoperability requires not only technical standards, but doctrine, joint training, and secure information sharing. The Nordic approach emphasizes exercises that fuse military and civilian responders because the most consequential drone attacks would target ports, energy networks, and critical supply nodes whose recovery depends on synchronized civil-military action. Integration also means political leaders, municipal authorities, and private companies are included in planning because protecting airspace against drones is no longer the monopoly of the armed forces. This wider definition of security is essential for small nations with limited resources but exposed infrastructure. The political dimension is as significant as the technical. 
Building a regional drone shield creates deterrence by eroding the expected payoff of drone attacks. Visible exercises join acquisitions and harmonized rules of engagement signal to adversaries that small, cheap strikes are unlikely to achieve strategic effect. Credibility is therefore built through doctrine and alliance cohesion as much as through equipment purchases. Nordic planners pair capability development with diplomatic messaging and legal frameworks designed to make interdiction predictable and defensible. Political consensus within parliaments and across coalitions ensures long-term continuity, shielding investments from short-term electoral cycles. Budgetary and industrial constraints shape choices. Nordic states are not unlimited spenders, they must optimize scarce resources. That reality pushes decision-makers toward cost-effective mixes, invest in detection networks and EW, where marginal returns are highest, and source kinetic interceptors strategically for assets whose loss would be catastrophic. Supply chain resilience has risen on procurement agendas, securing domestic or allied capacity for ammunition, critical electronics and maintenance shortens the lag between need and delivery under sustained pressure. Cooperative programs with Germany, the UK and the Baltic states also multiply output ensuring that Nordic industry contributes not only to national defense, but to the wider European arsenal. Ukraine's experience offers valuable lessons without providing turnkey answers. Ukrainian forces have innovated rapidly in both offensive drone tactics and improvised countermeasures, exposing vulnerabilities and demonstrating adaptation speed. The Nordics study these innovations closely adopting scalable concepts while avoiding improvisations that could undermine coalition interoperability. For states outside Europe, the distilled lesson is practical. Begin with sensors and doctrine. Affordable detection architectures and clear, legally grounded rules of engagement deliver outsized improvement in defense posture compared with piecemeal purchases of high-cost interceptors. Ukraine proves that even small investments in early warning and distributed response can save lives and infrastructure. Resilience completes the model. Redundancy in communications, hardened electrical grids, distributed logistics hubs and rapid repair capacity reduce the strategic payoff of drone strikes. Building resilience is neither cheap nor glamorous, but it is an investment that shrinks adversaries' return on risk. Effective CUS therefore transcends weapons procurement and becomes a national infrastructure priority that integrates civil planning, defense acquisition, and international cooperation. In Northern Europe, resilience is also about psychology, maintaining public confidence in the state's ability to respond. Civil preparedness campaigns, regular drills, and transparent communication help ensure that societies remain functional even under persistent harassment. A nation that can absorb repeated drone attacks without paralysis is far harder to coerce. The Nordic template is not prescriptive, but instructive. Layered sensors, calibrated kinetic options, pragmatic electronic warfare, interoperable command and control, and the political will to synchronize doctrine and procurement. In an era when low-cost offensive systems proliferate, the race is not to the flashiest weapon, but to the most coherent and sustainable ecosystem of defense. Long-term sustainment, international interoperability, and a durable political consensus will determine which states retain the initiative in the contest over unmanned systems. Policymakers should therefore prioritize doctrine, shared logistics, and industrial partnerships alongside capability purchases. The Nordic approach demonstrates that strategic advantage in the drone era will accrue not to those who acquire the most expensive interceptors, but to those who build resilient detection networks, harmonize legal frameworks, and sustain a common operational picture across allies. This is the practical arithmetic of deterrence in the drone age, now.